Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the channel. Cindy Daycheck with Queen Bee Creations. Today, we are going to experiment together. Now, I happened to thrift this jar, bottle, vase, vase. Let's settle on vase, um, which I love. It's got all of these swirls and things all over the place. Now, I have wanted to play with painting alcohol inks onto glass. I didn't want to swirl them. I didn't want to just have them rolling around. Um, so we're going to do that. We're going to use this as, as, as our play. Um, and what I'm thinking is that I will paint inside all of these different segments, different colors, different colors, all over the place, and then go back and I have to determine what I'll use to do the highs, right? So all of those high ridges will be a solid color. So I don't know if I'm gonna do like a black paint marker, if I'm gonna do gold, um, I, I don't know. <laughs> it depends on what the rest looks like. So what do I have? I have a paintbrush. I have a number of paintbrushes. And, and I'm thinking I need more pointy ones. Um, I have some alcohol off to the side to be able to clean my brush off. And I have some colors, but it really depends upon how they're looking. If I don't like the look of a particular color, I can wipe it away with more alcohol. So there's always that option. Because these will evaporate quickly if I put them out, I'm going to try just doing a little drop of the ink into my brush. All right, you are a very pale color and you're not coming out very well, but maybe I just didn't have enough. Oh, there we go. All right, I took advantage of a customer coming in and I switched the blues. So I went from the turquoise, which was just a little too pale, to stream, which is a little bit darker. And it shows up much better. So what I'm looking at doing is just taking one color at a time. And it doesn't matter if I end up getting, you know, some of my ink uh, up on those ridges. That's okay, because I am going to be covering them with something but I just want to make sure that I get this down into the lows. And at least staying like this gives me an idea, once it's all painted, of where I have to keep turning it to be able to see where those little ridges are. Under my lights, they, they disappear. Now, you could, instead of the alcohol inks, I'm using the alcohol inks because I've got it. Um, so you could use those if you have it. And I'm using them because of the translucency. I want to be able to have a light shining through this. You could use um, the paints designed for glass, right? That are designed maybe for doing some stained glass. Um, those would work too because they tend to be, um, they have like the whole line of translucent ones versus just opaques as well. So I'm not sure how many colors I'm going to use. So I'm trying to spread this out a little bit. And we'll see how it goes. And, and I'm not sure about the number of colors only because like I was thinking yellows and they might be too pale to show up. Usually what happens with alcohol inks is that the alcohol dries, I mean evaporates, and leaves the ink behind on your surface. But if you go and add more ink, you know, like with normal paints, you would do an extra layer to make them stand out a little bit more. Um, you reactivate the ink below and it doesn't allow you to layer on top of itself. So... It'll be a little experimenting with colors that show up. I mean, these are dry already, 
but I'm just gonna carry on with this color. This seems to be the right size paintbrush, so then I'll clean it off, and uh, we'll see what another color is that maybe works. I'm trying to spread out the colors a little bit, but also, oh, you join in. Okay, that's not gonna be a good one. All right, so recalling, recalling this one. I thought it was just gonna be a little swirl down there, but it actually extends over here and I don't want the blue by the blue. <laughs> so you see how easily I dipped this rag into a little bit of alcohol and uh, I just washed it away. So easy enough to do. But while I was talking, this has pretty much already dried. I've got a little bit of the alcohol ink left on it, but not that much. So I'm just looking for some small spots. Okay, I do have a lighter green called citrus. I'm not sure how light this is going to be, meaning that it's too light for my project. But I like this green a lot. I have sort of given up. I think that's a nice green for this. I have sort of given up trying to stay within the lines because um, you sort of see the lines, but then you see the, the, the lines in behind it. It starts to make your eyes go kind of buggy. <laughs> so I'm, I'm kind of getting them but there's different lighting and sometimes you can see them really well then sometimes you can't i like that green with with that blue so i'm sticking with it i may be a little concerned about what other colors i would add in after these but i'll um you get some ink on your fingers i'll i'll kind of have to worry about that one after but it's really just kind of painting, letting, letting the colors flow in there. Just... All right, let me get everything green that needs to be green done. And then we'll reevaluate where we're going. I knew I wanted the blue and the green. I'm just not sure after that. I think that's it for the green. I'm kind of digging this already, actually. I think it's going to be very pretty. Now, it's going to be too narrow a top to really be able to get candle down into there. Um, so what I do envision is dropping in like a strand of little, those mini fairy lights, maybe right? This one, I'm thinking I'm going to go wild plum. And we'll see how, I don't want to go super dark. I mean, I have an indigo blue and that kind of stuff, but, uh, oh, that's, that's kind of a, a bright pinky kind of color. So, that one will maybe work. I mean, you could choose to stay just all in blues and green tones, and that would be, that would be lovely, or do it all in pinks and purples, or I'm just doing color. And I don't think, if I don't want any color touching itself. I don't think three will do it. I think that I'm, I'm gonna need a fourth color in there. So we'll see what it looks like with this color merged in there. That's already looking quite pretty. And um, where else it has to go and, and then we'll go. You can see that I'm touching this. It's not coming off because um, it needs alcohol to do that. 
but recognize just because it's dry and my hands don't wipe it off doesn't mean that it is sealed. I could just squirt plain alcohol over this and wipe all my work away. Okay, so this is my, my bottle so far. It's looking pretty colorful. Um, what I've tried to do is just kind of leave a spot here and there that I could add my final color, which is yellow. And I'm hoping it's bright enough that we can still kind of see it. And if I have spots where I have to do two yellows together, then I'll kind of reassess with my other colors. I think that this particular yellow is going to work. So, this is just the, the final step of the, this painting. And then I have to think about the ridges. I would say, I mean, you could just leave it like this, but I got to tell you, my painting really needs to have those lines in between it, I think. Um, maybe if you were painting neater than I did, it would be okay. But I think those lines are needed to kind of define the colors better, define the spaces better, and then the lines will be more opaque versus the paint that is very translucent. So you'll have that contrast. So I just have to decide, and here's where I'm at with my in my head, whether I want black lines to define it, which would make it look a little bit more um, stained glass, or whether I do gold. And, and my head is kind of leaning to the fact that there's maybe a couple of spots where the lines are kind of thick, that maybe if I did something like black, I could do white dots or gold dots here and there to add another element because, gee, it's not looking busy enough already. <laughs> so that is some of the thought process in my head that I thought, well, I might as well share that with you in terms of some of the decision making and where some of my thoughts lead me. What I've decided is I'm going to do black and I'm going to do a black oil-based marker, which pretty much means that's permanent on there. What I have to do is, is kind of hold this in a direction that I can kind of see those ridges and I can't talk and do this at the same time. and just kind of paint, where's the little piece that I did? Paint um, directly over top. So this has swirls and ridges and all kinds of places I can get into trouble. Can you see this here? That's what I'm doing, is just going around all of those details and creating the definition between it. I think that the oil-based marker is, the, the oil-based paint pen is the best way to go because it's going to 
stick and you're gonna get a really clearly defined black image um, versus like a Sharpie, which is, is probably gonna give you more of a washed out look. You'd, you'd pretty much have to be going over it numerous times. And I really think um, if I manage to go around once smoothly, I wanna be done. <laughs> I think that, that I risk messing it up the more times that I have to go around areas. There's some sections, and I'm just doing one right now, so I'll show you. There's some sections where lines converge and they are definitely um, creating a thicker area, almost like in a Zentangle area, right? Like here, you see those spots? So, um, I'm just gonna watch for those and try and go around everything and get that all outlined and drying. Once the oil paint is dry, then I will seal everything, but I'll come back and I'll talk about sealers. And um, for this, it's gonna be a spray sealer, but definitely it will need to be sealed because this um, alcohol ink is still live. If I just spritz it with a bunch of alcohol, all that ink would wa wash away. So it still needs to be sealed um, to be able to create a barrier for that happening. All right, that might have been a little messy, but this is the finished little jar. Um, the oil paint marker was a good idea because it dries kind of shiny looking. Now, um, so I, I like that, I like that contrast with it. I have this fairy light, which is for bottles so that it's got kind of almost like a cork top, but this is a big enough opening, so. Come on, you. Oh, I gotta go try another one. Hang on, I got another one. I buy these by the huge bag from Amazon just because like to stuff them into almost anything. This will work great because um, there's there's a lot of it, <laughs> and when it comes to turning it on and off, I just really have to dump it out the top. Okay, go in there. Right. So I can just turn this on and drop it down there and have lights going. Then I can just pop it out and turn it off. Not a problem. Hard to see the lights right now because it's light in here. But to, to finish this off, I alcohol inks um, are susceptible to UV rays. So if this is something that you were gonna put maybe into a windowsill, what I do have is Krylon UV protectant. It's an archival spray. I use this on any of my paintings, right? So it's just a, a light coating of this to seal it from UV rays. And then I will use a Krylon triple click, triple thick crystal clear spray. Oh my gosh, this is probably why this is broken. I can't get it off ever. Okay, well, I'll just spray this on once I can get it open. You get the idea. So let me know how you think this turned out. I love, um, I love the, the look of the alcohol inks on the glass. Really translucent. Um, more so than, more so than the uh, glass paints. I was trying to think. The pe Pebio, PBO, however you say that. Um, okay, I can't stop fussing. I will get it. 
Um, more so than the, the Pebio um, glass paints, this has fewer streaks. It's a lot smoother looking, um, a little bit more finished looking. And um, I'll drop in a link for the pen that I used for the oil marker pen. I think I just got it at Michael's though. I'll see if there's a link to, to somewhere else. Um, I love this. Uh, you know what? It was cute with the swirls and the clear glass, but you know what? We just have to zhuzh things up. And um, I think that this just makes a beautiful colored accent, certainly with a light shiny behind it. Um, if you've got a bigger opening on yours, and you can do this with anything. I mean, you can paint your own designs on. You could um, look for anything with any kind of a pattern. This one just happened to have, have all of those raised swirls, which lent itself to this particular project. But um, let me know what you think, guys. It's just a little bit of painting. The um, painting the raised areas was a little bit picky just because it was easy if you went too fast to slide off. But uh, that paint pen did wipe off if you did it right away while it was still wet. If you left it to sit, well, then it was permanent. <laughs> and I don't think it needs anything else. I think that doing gold or white dots or something like that would just be overkill. Um, so, you know, sometimes enough is enough and this is enough. Thanks for tuning in. Let me know what you think. I'll take some clearer pictures of it. Uh, maybe I can see if I shut off the lights, how dark it is back here and we can see what it looks like. Look forward to seeing you on the next one. Until then, take care. <laughs>